Hello, and welcome to Uncensored Pillow Talk. I'm your host, Colin Steck-Trost. Since most of us are still trying to wrap our head around what appears to be the inevitable fraying of the fabric of our democracy, the therapist in me has some advice for everyone tuning in. It's two short words that are easier said than done. Self-care. If you're like me, every time I check the news, I cringe at the onslaught of crazy new headlines, and I'm always terrified to see what Cheeto-in-Chief and his billionaire cabinet of cronies is doing now. It's a lot to process and a lot to keep up with, and we've got to our work cut out for us in terms of how to approach this debacle. Remember that our public opinion is a strong weapon, so it's important that we continue to make our voices heard and not get beaten down. Before we take to the streets and protest, we need to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. Worn out, anxiety-ridden opponents of Trumpism won't be much use on three hours of sleep, scrambling to fit together a protest sign after a 60-hour work week. So I implore you to figure out what your self-care strategies are and make them happen. What do you do to self-soothe? I ask my clients this all the time, and we actually have a great time brainstorming. Right after this break, we'll talk about some ideas for self-care. Would you like to win a complete makeover? In order to participate, you must like Salon DNA San Francisco along with Attitude Show, both pages on Facebook and Share, and follow us on Instagram. So make sure to tell all your friends and family, and I will see the lucky winner soon at Salon DNA. Welcome back to Uncensored Pillow Talk, where we are discussing self-care strategies. Some examples that I've come up with, and you know you best, so think about what you like to do that makes you feel happy and fulfilled, but a lot of what can really work well for self-care is exercising, yoga, going for a walk, listening to music, meditating, consuming an entire pint of ice cream while binge watching Netflix shows, game nights with friends or partners, and my personal favorite, sex. Sex with your lover, your lovers, your fuck buddy, or your buddies, or even if you're enjoying some of the toys that we talked about in our last show. We had a few questions from our viewers about some of those, so we'll get into that later. Most importantly, remember that there are people out there who are just as scared and frustrated as you are. The more that we can stick together and uplift each other, the better. Go to your families, chosen families or biological, and emote, express your frustrations. Get together to figure out how you want to take care of each other and yourself. It's times like these where it's crucial to remember one of the keys to happiness, the strength of our close interpersonal relationships. In fact, a Harvard study performed by Grant and Gluck that began its research over 75 years ago pointed to the physical and emotional well-being of people being directly correlated to the neurological effects of being around the people we love. It's high time that we ditch that old pull-yourself-up-by-your-bootstraps patriarchal mentality and remind each other that we are humans and as such, it's okay to depend on one another. It's not codependent it's not a sign of weakness. We're not all good at everything and that's okay. It's okay to ask for help and support those in need. Please keep that in mind when it comes to how you plan and organize your self-care. For those of you who live in the San Francisco Bay Area and are interested in attending a self-care workshop for activists, there's one coming up on February 25th. It's in El Cerrito right near the BART station and they do suggest registering beforehand. So follow the link below but it would be a great way to come up with some ideas for you and your friends to implement excellent self-care strategies into your life. I hope you really take my message about self-care to heart. Now that we discussed that, we're gonna bring up something that I promised we'd discuss and answer a few questions about one of my personal favorite self-care toys, the Fleshlight. We had a question from one of our viewers about how exactly to use this magical instrument, so I'm gonna show you myself. Don't get excited, it's not like that. <laughs> this particular fleshlight is called the Crystal One, which means that you can see exactly what's happening inside of it. They come like this, so they look kind of discreet uh, if you don't know what it's for, which is why it's great to keep in your nightstand or whatever. 
The flashlight is awesome, and this particular version is designed to be clear so that you can see what's going on inside of it. You remove the top, you'll notice that it has the silicone base. This particular one is shaped like an anus, but they come in a wide variety. Some look like a vagina, some look like a mouth. So what you do is get yourself riled up and then use a little bit of lube and you would stick your penis inside of the orifice and stimulate accordingly. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. <laughs> but if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to send us an email at upt at newsupnow.com. Thank you so much for watching. Our next show, we'll be talking about relationships and apps, so please share some more of your thoughts. Thanks so much.